Crash Bandicoot, an amazing game that I excel at. But in today's video, I'm going to platinum all three of Crash Bandicoot's games. There is a total of 72 trophies throughout all three of the games. Taking the averages of difficulty from Crash 1, 2, and 3, I'm left with a 5 out of 10 difficulty and 31 hours of gameplay to complete all three games. Starting with the first game, the opening cutscene tells us that Crash is a retard, <coughs> a reject, and falls out of a window. The first trophy was unlocked by using a basic attack on an enemy and flinging it into another oh. enemy. By collecting these tokens, I was granted access into a bonus stage which gave me my second trophy. Yeah, there we go. I then came across the first boss of the game, which was a village chief called Papu Papu. He was easily defeated and he rewarded me with a trophy. What are you doing? And they say this game is hard. The next trophy was, as descripted, die. So I did, and they gave me my trophy. Well, that's not fair, is it? The next boss on the list was an insane asylum escapee. So we kicked his ass with some TNT and sent him back to the mental institution. Ah. Goodbye, Ripperoo. Yeah. When completing a level, I was so blind that the game decided to crush Crash with boxes that I missed before giving me a deserved trophy. I then defeated a koala that was on steroids and liked chucking rocks before he was swept away by a minecart. Yep, yeah. get swept away. Man, I am on a roll with these trophies. Afterwards, inside a nuclear power plant, I got sat, which made me see London and France for a trophy, but I will call my lawyer for a perfect lawsuit. During a fight with the mob boss Pinstripe, I spun him to death, effectively awarding me a trophy. I then had a fight with Frankenstein's monsters, who threw these boogers that I had to stomp on, and then he turned into this Hulk guy before he fell out the window to his demise. In the next level, I stood on this moving gem platform for a quick and easy trophy. I went up against my creator with his typical 1980s ray gun and reflected these green orbs which blew up in his face making him fall over a hundred feet in the air. After the story mode was complete, I started going for all the collectibles and in doing so, I got 99 lives for a trophy. After the completion of this time trial relic during this level, I was awarded the trophy for earning 5 time relics. Getting really good at these. I then went over to Crash 2 because I was a bit bored with Crash 1 and I got a trophy for going into my first bonus stage for Crash 2. Again in Crash 2, I pissed off Cortex a bit too much for a trophy and possibly caught on his assassination list. Back in Crash 1 now, I got the 10 time relics which gave me a trophy could go all the way. In this level, I grabbed the first out of the two keys that I needed for a trophy. There we go. And the key in Sunset Vista. Up next, when destroying these boxes, I accidentally spun away an extra life that I didn't see, but it did give me a trophy. I then located the next key I needed and achieved the trophy for it. During the secret level, I rode a hog well enough that I got half of all clear gems. In the other secret level, I had Aku Aku glowing, allowing me to see my surroundings until I got hit by a guillotine and was stranded in the dark. But my epic gamer skills kicked in and I was victorious. Let's go. Oh, I did it blind. I did it blind. I did it blind. I did it blind. <laughs> in one of the hardest levels in the game, I gathered the last gem I needed for the trophy. As Coco, which is Crash's sister, we had to kill five enemies, and I don't know why this was a trophy, it just was. Now these last two trophies are absolutely ridiculous. The one here is for getting the gem in the DLC level, Stormy Ascent, and this level broke me. I was so relieved when it was finally over. For the last achievement for Crash 1, I just had to complete the time trial, which I did, and I got a gold relic, but that's all I needed, and it gave me my trophy, and that's Crash 1 completely finished. So for the start of Crash 2, I was already up to the fight with my Familiar good old friend, face. the insane asylum patient, Ripper Roo. This time, he escaped again, and he was armed with a new substance called Nitro, which blows up as soon as its surface has been touched inappropriately. But I pull out in time to be able to win, and I get my first trophy. The next boss fight was the Disappointment Brothers. Now this fight was mind-numbingly boring and predictable, in all honesty, It's the biggest piece of dog sh But upon defeating them, I was rewarded my next trophy, Komo go f*** yourself. 
I then went up against a dog on steroids who was blinder than me because he fell off platforms three separate times. But at least he was better than the disappointment brothers. After I defeated the tiny man, I got my trophy and all was okay. The second to last boss in the game was Engine, who had a freaking missile strapped to his forehead, which seemed to be casual, but blowing him up gave me my next trophy. And finally, the last boss of the story for Crash 2 was good old creator Neo Cortex. This was definitely easier than the last fight in Crash 1, but with janky controls. To win, I just stranded him in space getting shoes and a trophy. I started running low on lives, so I did this farm that managed to get me to 99 lives, which gave me a trophy. So win-win, I get many lives and I also get a trophy. A new mechanic in Crash 2 is the secret exits hidden in plain sight in random levels. By doing this one, I got a trophy, but also these exits allowed me to access different parts of a level to collect all the boxes and even the red colored gem. Since I now just have the red gem, I used one of the red gem secret bonus paths, which unlocked me my next trophy. Oh, discover gem pass, sneaky little bugger. I then discovered another secret exit in the level bear down, which gave me a trophy island hopping. Alright, secret exit. By collecting half of all clear gems for Crash 2, I got a trophy. But Crash 1 only had 26 clear gems, whilst Crash 2 had 42. Yeah, I was in for a grind and a half. Next on the list, I went back to save my polar bear and was rewarded for my efforts with friendship and a trophy. This trophy I'm about to get is for discovering the secret exit in Hanging Out. For the last secret exit trophy, I had to belly flop this enemy, opening a space for me to be transported. I sped through this level during a time trial and only got a sapphire, which is the worst ranking, but it gave me a trophy for completing five time trials. I then loaded up into the first level by playing as Cobra this time. This allowed me to squish five enemies, giving me the trophy Boom Shakalaka. That's five, right? Yeah, there we go. Boom Shakalaka. Very easy and it's a very cool achievement. Now this next trophy needed me to get smacked by these Icemen and flung into a frozen lake for the trophy Crash Cubed. This next trophy was one that made me very sad, as I had to betray the trust of my precious polar bear and jump on him ten times for a trophy. Like game, what are you doing? This is so messed up. I was able to discover my first death route and this was able to give me a trophy for not dying during a level. I then got stung by a bee and because Crash is deathly allergic to bees, I died oh. and got a trophy. Oh, die. Now unfortunately the last three trophies for Crash 2 was for collecting all gems, collecting 10 and all 27 oh, time relics. Right. But sadly the footage got corrupted so I can't show you when I completed them but I can move on to Crash Bandicoot 3, the third and last game in this video. As always the first achievement I got was for taking a bonus path on the first level which in this game is a platform that takes me away to a different part of the level. You get the gist of it. Anyway, Tiny is back again, and this time we were in ancient Greece, casually messing up the timeline. But defeating Tiny gives us a power up and a trophy. Now this next trophy was for waiting out this enemy until he stopped, so you can release him from his mortal bounds and set him free. The next story boss is Dingo Dial. He is equipped with a flamethrower that doesn't seem legal, but he doesn't care. So I discipline him and make him see the consequences by blowing him up. But at least it got me my trophy and another upgrade. I then went up against Dr. Entropy, who messes with time and has a tuning fork. But even a bandicoot can defeat a time god, so that's what I did, and I got a trophy for it and an upgrade. I then discovered my first death through of the game, which got me a trophy and the blue gem. Next was Engine again, but this time I was forced to play as Coco and got an assist from Puma, or whatever, but I blew him up yet again, leaving him to the vacuum of space, but I got a trophy, so all is good. Now to wrap up the entire story mode, I was up against no other than Neo Cortex himself. This time he had help from Uka Uka, which I believe is Aku Aku's brother or half-sister, I don't know, but kicking him, or should I say spinning Neo into this obvious hole, defeats him and earns me a final boss trophy of all Bandicoot games. 
This trophy is when I stepped on this red platform that kind of looks like the button Russia could use to destroy the world if they wanted to. The next things I wanted to do on my bucket list was to play as a girl and ride a jet ski, so I combined the two and did well enough to earn a trophy for completing five time trials. After being in a bikey gang and completing an illegal race with the cops, I came out on top and got a clear gem, getting me halfway through collecting all clear gems for a trophy. I then pulled out my bazooka and shot one of the seven wonders of the world. Two, one. And this got me the trophy Riddle of the Sphinx. Next I rode Puma the Tiger across the Great Wall of China during a time trial and got a trophy for getting 10 time relics gold or better. I then again shot at a man riding a UFO in a specific level making him combust while I stand there smiling at the sight of him dying for another trophy. Playing as a chick, I turned into a tornado in the medieval times and spun away five enemies once again for a trophy. During a trip to the medieval times, I ran into this wizard who turned me into a frog. This ended up like the movie Princess in the Frog. Yeah. Are you ready? Are you ready? Transformation Central! Transformation Central! Transformation Central! Transmodification Central! But I got a trophy nonetheless. Now the last thing I had to do with the bazooka was to shoot a chicken five times, for no reason than to be a dick. So it came easy for me as I'm always a dick as most people say. I then pulled a Marty McFly and went back to the Jurassic period. I got chased by a dinosaur but got carried away for a trophy. Back in my bikey gang, I crash crashed into this alien sign and was transported to a different level and completing the secret level awarded me another trophy as well as the one for crashing into the sign. I then got a taste of ancient Egypt and was mummified, giving the trophy crash under wraps. The next trophies I got were for collecting all gems, collecting all time relics, gold or better, and collecting 99 lives, as well as shooting the imposter crash and getting the DLC trophy. All of that delicious footage was corrupted and unusable. So yeah, fun times for me. Now the review stage of the video. The Crash Bandicoot games are fun, don't get me wrong, but are tedious in most parts. If you're going for the Platinum, I recommend trying to collect as many clear gems as you can during the story, as it helps with the cleanup afterwards. But overall, I'd give the entire Crash trilogy a solid 8 out of 10, as it takes skill and effort to get good. Things I have indeed. Now if you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out my South Park The Fractured Butthole Platinum that's on the screen now.